I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. Now today we've done something very unique. The last two weeks, or last two weeks, last two times, we were introduced to John Bringhurst and Diane Bringhurst, and I've invited them to share their story together a little more. I think it's unique that we've heard, heard so many situations where husbands will learn about the truth and their wives aren't there, or the wife has learned about the truth of what we believe in, in coming to Christ, uh, but the husband isn't there, and it causes divisions. And so this is unique in, in many respects to have the two of you coming together, although you do have interesting perspectives on the story. And, and as a, a, many of our other interviews, we don't always say everything that was on our heart or <laughs> our mind, and we think, oh, why didn't I say that? So anyway, you, you folks live in Idaho. I appreciate you so much coming down. And uh, you have five children. Five children. You were married yeah. in the temple. Yeah. You were very active for how many years? 50 55. Well, something. I guess you can't count yourself being active eight, as a baby. but <laughs> Eight years old, but you were 55 years in the church. Earl, we were, if you could call it the true Blue Mormon, that, that was a family. That's, you know, we, yeah. yeah. And so, again, just remind us, John, you were kind of the uh, early instigator, were you, in all this? And yeah. Maybe just what, what, <laughs> what happened just briefly. Well, I uh, we had a couple experiences. You know, w one of our children went on a mission, came home, and 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 was leaving or left, and it caused me to to really start thinking more and to do a little study, do a little study, and, yeah. and and at that time I ran into a a video on YouTube, um, the top five myths and truths of why committed Mormons leave the church. John DeLynn did that, and you know, I I spent some t a little bit of time, just a little bit of time, looking at that until the fear set in. Oh, am I doing something wrong? Kind of heart starts beating a little bit. Yeah. And you think, oh, is this right? <laughs> I I you know I've always you know you just like I said we've 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 been members of the church doing trying to do the right thing, and so I the fear set in, and then and then. Uh, Time went on, and I and I decided to take a look at that information again, and maybe go a little deeper. Now, did you share any of this with Diane no. at this point? You, at this you point, know no. about your child leaving. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. So he approached us, and and I remember very distinctly telling him, "We still love you. We still accept you, but we're still where we've always been. Yeah. You know, the, our our beliefs haven't changed." <laughs> and we had a daughter that, as Diane mentioned, you know, she left early on as pretty much a teenager and you know we we were trying to navigate that as well and yeah. um, but it's just it's just the idea of, of just trying to trying to stick with it and, and build this eternal family and it hopes probably that in the millennium you'll be able to talk to your kids again or those that have left and yeah. get them back into the fall well right. what's that quote <laughs> that they and I can't even remember. Oh, if you, but if you're faithful and you're under, your well, children will be under the canopy of right, your testimony. That you won't lose any of your right, children. Right, right. So you have that hope that. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's so, what you hold on to at that, uh, in those moments. Yeah. So your research starts at least making you think a little bit. Uh, you back off though, and that's the interesting thing is you start thinking. You yeah. you really said it. You you, you have moments where. Now I'm really thinking here. I'm, I'm studying. I'm not just taking the brethren from Salt Lake and their words as my words and my thoughts now. And I, I'm thinking. Yeah. And and you know, looking back, that's what needs to happen. We we have intelligence. We're smart people. All of us. Every human being is yeah. a 
has a mind to, to use and think. And, and it just takes, it, it really takes giving yourself permission to get rid of the fear of thinking and think and start looking at the truth and the yeah. evidence, you know, because it's there. It's yeah. easy to, it's easy to find. And it's in, and in some places that you would never think of, like on the church website. <laughs> yeah. Know, so. Yeah, and you explained that, that you know more about Mormonism now than you ever did as a Mormon. I guess Without that's true of you, oh, too. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. yeah. All and, I knew and that's is, true of me, too. I, all we knew is what we were taught. We were supposed to stick to that. Yeah. Well, the things you say you know, you, you know, you just really don't. <laughs> you really don't know. So this dynamic, again, we'll get into this about how you eventually share or start dropping little hints. Uh, Diane said that, you started, she started sensing a little. He, I remember yeah. one time he said to me after conference or during conference, <laughs> you have to understand, I was really into conference, couldn't wait for conference weekend and was going to listen to all the on, talks. And 10 to 12, 2 to 4. <laughs> and you know. and typically John would listen to, oh, he might get three talks in and then I'd curl he up by the fireplace <laughs> and have a good nap. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time you know, I, I did my fair share of watching. Oh, yeah, sure. he did, but, yeah. but I took it pretty darn serious. And I remember one time I was saying to him, did you hear that? You know, oh, my gosh, that was w wonderful. And, and he said to me, well, anybody could say that. It's just a good thought. You know, we all have those good thoughts. And I remember saying to him, hmm, that's not very But supportive. we didn't say it. He did. <laughs> yeah. But he was thinking a lot. Yeah. And I could feel that. I could sense what was, you know, taking place in him. And that bothered you probably. Oh, yeah, it bothered me a lot. Yeah. Did you, you certainly didn't feel like you were losing your eternal, Not yet. Not yeah, at that point, no. Not at that no. point. No. So you know, were, you, I, were you doing this subtly or were you really intentionally? Subtly, um, just trying to figure out how, you know, once I determined, you know, there's just so much here and... I can't I, deny it. I can't deny it. it. Yeah. You know, okay, now what? She needs to know. <laughs> she needs to know this. And how do you, how do you go about that? Yeah. And um, Well, let's talk about the different approaches that can happen. Yeah. You've heard of an experience, I guess, where someone went in with both heels kicking and yeah. screaming. And A lot of it has oh. to do with personalities, I think. But, you know, I think if you just draw the line and... and and say, oh, you know, it's just a bunch of junk over here, and you know, this is. You've got to, you've got to sort of do it, do it together. You know, you you need to drop some subtle hints along the way, as for lack of a better way of putting it, uh, to try to bring your spouse with you at some point. Um, but but show love and right? show love. You know, and that's what I was. I was consciously trying to do that, really? and she was consciously trying to do the same thing. We were. It was a very good time. I felt God with both of us, which is why I wasn't too worried, yeah. because we were both being very understanding of each other, and honestly, I felt as if John was the most Christ-like he'd ever been during that period of my, time, of my life. I and felt, you were trying to be, too. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I felt I was completely, I felt completely different. Um, I'm involved in my community a lot, and and I, I noticed at a at a at a luncheon, you know, I looked around at everybody. This was during the time as I was I was getting rid of all, you know, what I previously thought, and I just realized, you know, I look around and I can I can love all these people, they I can judging. I can get to know all these people, not not that one because they're not members of the church or you know whatever. I, I just dropped all that. I and felt it was that so freedom free. too. Yeah. I, immediately, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you were saying that um, that you eventually get to a point where you fall down on your knees, kind of, and I did. I t turned it over to God, right? I felt something fearful in me, and um, I just, I just, because you know, my daughter had left, my son had left, I knew other members of our family, extended family, who were leaving, and um, that fear that really strong fear, oh my gosh. So I dropped to my knees and I just prayed, God, I will never leave you and I will never leave your true church. And you know, looking back on that now, I didn't leave God and I didn't leave his true church. His true oh. church is a body of believers. believers and I'm in that church. Isn't that 
great feeling. And it said, and, the, and they said, listen to your husband, or the voice. And I was told to listen to John. I didn't want to. I was, I, you can ask him. I'm pretty stubborn, I'll admit it. And um, I, <laughs> I, was, I was not going to come to him and say, okay, tell me what you know. No, no, no. So, you know, you, a week later. You wouldn't admit to that. Huh? A week later, an opportunity arose, and he came, and I had that answer. So I wasn't going to not listen to the answer. Yeah. And and that's what, that's where it all started for me. What did you start sharing more specifically? I mean, the, um, the essays, uh, just trying to get her to read you those. You asked her to read I those. I did. A I couple of those. podcasts with really faithful, believing Mormons like us who had found out the stuff, the yeah. historical oh, stuff. Really? And I, she was very much like me, and I, oh man, it unraveled for me very quickly. Very quickly. That's right. That was that snow day. Oh, um, that's right. I had been really right. okay. Besides the essays, I was dropping hints. And, <laughs> but what, the essays what, were big. What is it that she would watch and listen or read? And there was there was a video I, I ran into of a couple, and they were just telling their story. They weren't going into the details. You know, they were just telling their story. Their story happened to be involved with the general authority, which gave mm -hmm. it cr credibility. Um, well, the general authority said something to them that really struck me, and yeah, and that that was very powerful to me. It's amazing how God will plant those little seeds, and mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We sat and watched that, and I was watching her as we did, and I could tell the lights are coming on here. <laughs> you know, when that finished, um, I think I may have asked you, "Do you want more?" <laughs> Well, this is, the funny, this is the funny thing about that whole thing. I knew what God had told me to do, but I'm still, I'm digging my heels in, yeah, you know. I know. <laughs> and so when he said that, will you listen to something with me? I said to him, yes, if you'll listen to a conference talk with me after. Oh, no. <laughs> Every morning, conference talks, you know, in the shower, listening. But after that, after I watched that video, I didn't want to watch a conference talk. Do you remember what video that was? It was, yes. yeah. Do you want us to say? Well, if it's appropriate. It, it, it was, um, they, they actually have a website called linkingarms.org. Oh. It's Ken and Ruth Ann Sullivan. I'm sure they wouldn't mind us. Um, oh, I know the Sullivans, yeah. yeah. It's their story. They, their story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just their story. Sweet people. Great people. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, and they came out together, which is. They did. They, they did. Be able yeah. to mm -hmm. They did come together. out together. Now, have you run into couples that haven't, that have been divided? In this, you I know, of, yeah. We know of some. I do. We do. Yeah, we know of couples who have not been together on it. It's Definitely. very hard for them. I mean, I just am, I feel just what blessed a, what that a blessing. Diane, you know, that we're, we're in this together. Yeah. And, um, you know, she might have mentioned that I was willing to just keep going and hopefully someday, you know, the truth will come out. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it happened quicker than I really anticipated. Do you think the bishop that you went to, both for, with your primary class and um, just the other questions that you had, do you think he could have approached things differently and, and brought you back into the church? Or? Oh, no. He tried to keep us going. He, but, yeah. he did yeah. a good job. I mean, he... He did what he could. He did. He. I'm sure, you know, I look back on that, and not that we were any special anybody special, but we were strong, faithful members. Well, I, I mean, as a bishop, and, and you certainly know this uh, from our just being in the church, you know those strong families. I mean, you just... There's uh, a few strong families that will you know, do what you ask them to 20, do. It's that 20-80%, but right. you've got 20% right. of those And when we were, families a phone call came in, on, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're there. And, doing, and I'm sure for him, that was probably very oh, that's disarming. Oh, yeah. yeah. I never had anyone come to me with this kind, these kinds of questions, and I would have probably had typical Mormon answers right. for them. <laughs> yeah. You know, I wouldn't yeah. have known much either. That was the thing that immediately, because when I went in there, even though I pretty much knew the things that I had found out were true, yeah. they were pretty solidly true. They were definitely true. Yeah. I um, was hoping that the church was still true somehow. Oh, sure. And that I didn't he had want some to insights leave it. And that, that you... he could help exactly. alleviate this horrible thing that was coming into my life. And you know, one of the comments that he made, 
in just talking about the translation process and you know why is the story changing and you know his comment was I don't care how this book came about it's here, true here it is <laughs> here it is. yeah well I do I mean it, it's not so much that it's that why is the story changing and if this is the truth from the beginning well why weren't we saying it from the beginning yeah I taught people on my mission which is really one of the moments as I'm thinking and looking back that. I was really frustrated at, and, and it was a moment for me. I taught people on my mission this story. Sure. The church is changing that story. Yeah. Well, why didn't that happen back then? So anyway, it was it was kind of frustrating. Yeah, and, and you mentioned it, I think in your in your uh, story too about the book of uh, not the book of Abraham. That was another one, but the first visions. Yeah. I I'd never mm. known that. Me oh, no. either. I had no idea. I thought the Pearl of Great Price was the only one out there. Yeah. And John had told to come to me about that, and I had read that um, essay. But of course, you have to be in the right spot for it to really affect you. I guess that's it. Anyway, later on when I thought about it and I went back and read that, I was devastated by the differences. They're, they're not tiny little small no, differences. They're, not they're big. And you think. I had five children, and I could very clearly tell you of each of their births without probably much variance, variance in what, how it really happened because yeah. those were very important days. I could tell you about the day we were married. I don't think I would tell you there there was someone there that wasn't or that there were people not there that were. Do you see what I'm saying? Especially if it was God and, <laughs> yeah. if it's, and His exactly, Son Jesus Christ. If, it is, if I had seen God and His Son, I'm not going to change Standing that story. Standing there in flesh and bones. Right. You think you might have Remember and as a mother, you know, um, Lucy Mack Smith was a journal writer, and mm -hmm. she was a very, um, she was a, a mom, and she wrote in her journal. Well, there's nothing in her journal prior to 1832 about any first vision. Yeah. And um, if, you'd have said if you're a mom and your son tells you that you saw God the Father in Jesus Christ, I think you're going to be telling a few people, and I think there's going to be a lot of talk going on around about that. And we were taught that. We were taught that there was all that. And that the, the pastors were telling him, right. you know, and that there was persecution. And, right. But there's no real histor historical evidence of any that. of that to support when that. When the church was organized, there was no mention of a first vision. Yeah. That, that wasn't even talked about. Or the priesthood. Or the priesthood. Oh, or the priesthood. Yeah. The first, the first uh, Doctrine and Covenants, the mm. Book of Commandments that came out, no mention of either of those either, as well. It wasn't until the 1835 Doctrine and Covenants that uh, some of that stuff some of that, that started coming well, out. And, and section 101 of that 1835 DNC was all about um, polygamy not being the law. Only one man. Only one, one man, one wife. That stayed in the Doctrine and Covenants until Brigham Young put in the current 132 in 1876. So the whole time, you know, the, the church is, uh, it, it just flip flops. Can you imagine being a missionary? In, in 1850s and 1860s, you've got this section 101, and you're telling people, and you probably have wives back in the states, and you're trying to teach that we, the church only practices uh, one man, one wife. That Huge must have been shift. a disconnect or yeah. some. Uh, how you yeah. deal with that? I bet there was a lot that left at that point. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned uh, an experience with the the boast. This was big for Carla too. She oh, she was kind of tipped her over the edge. That was another big one for Tell me. Tell us about that story. Um, well, I had just you know recently read right this, in the history of the church. This quote, you yeah. know, oh what is it? Oh hell boil over or whatever. <laughs> How does it begin? And yeah. let and your lava flow down. Let your lava flow down. down. And I've only had I've been accused of having seven wives when I can only find one. And also then he says, I have done more to keep a church together than any of the apostles, even Jesus, Jesus Christ. And when I read that, I, I was not only sick inside, but I was like, why didn't I ever hear this before? You know, I never. Right in the history of it's the in the history of the church. Vol I'm sure John knows the volume. Volume, volume six, six, nineteen, I yeah. think. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Um, so then we were having a discussion with a family member, people that we love and respect, and. The person that I'm going to talk about, he, um, he, he's been somebody that I've always thought was very knowledgeable in, in church, church history yeah. and, and anything uh, of the church. And 
I asked him about that quote, and I said, what do you think about that quote? And he said, well, is there anything untrue about that quote? Oh, dear. Oh, and that's when I knew <laughs> that the hold and the, I want to call it, the marination, we're marinated yeah. from the time we're a baby Marinate. in, a in the sauce. <laughs> we are soaked in the sauce, right? Yeah, yeah. And so when... Soaked in the sauce. <laughs> when you come <laughs> to realization and then you ask somebody a question like that, that's when you realize how deep it, how deep it goes. That you can hear a quote like that and say, well, that quote's true, isn't it? <laughs> about Makes Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, and I was... Boy, I thought about that for a long time afterwards. It was very troubling to me. Wow. Well, so during your interviews, was there anything that you might have wanted to say or have forgotten? Or did you have other people come over and try to talk to you? And, uh, oh, yeah. As you we, were we have. <coughs> Diane got a text from a good friend, um, and we've done a lot Life of things friends. Over, the, over the years with these folks. and. And the, the text was, um, we've heard rumors, can we come and see what's going on? Uh, Which was very great. I, yeah. I value that she was... The only people that ...would come and ask the us. Only the only ones. ones. Mm -hmm. Even ward members probably didn't. No. We're, we didn't get that. Oh, yeah. no. No, no. Well, they're members, and they were in our ward, but they were actually serving in a young adult branch at the time. They came over, and so I kind of joked around. So, you've heard about my affair, and or I'm gay, or what, what you know... <laughs> <laughs> What's the rumor? Playing around. Yeah. We, I just went into probably way too much because their eyes were glazed over, and yeah. you know you could tell it was just kind of going over. And yeah. here you are, eager to share yeah. what little we thought we somehow know. what we thought. You know, God sending them over to find out the truth. <laughs> yeah. We thought that they would accept it, but you know, it's okay. I, I, you know, the old. Analogy: Seeds have been planted, mm -hmm. Maybe and, something and down I the road. think that there's going to be a lot of people that find truth and come out. And the Bringhurst in, twin, in Kimberly, Idaho, were one of the, f <laughs> the first. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well I'm, I'm really proud and thrilled that you, you folks came out together. And I am saddened that, uh, first of all, that some people that leave the church don't have a foundation in Jesus. And it sounds like you had an early experience yeah. with Jesus. Oh, yeah. Did you sense a change somewhere along the way that said, okay, I, th I think I need Jesus more in my life than, or did that kind of hit you a little bit? Well, I'm still learning yeah. about that yeah, we talked about myself. That. And, you know, I hope, I have hope. Yeah. I have hope in it and in, yeah. in that. And, um, but I'm getting there. Yeah, well, good for you. He's so full of love and so Christ-like that it's just a matter of time. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, and, but I think the fact that you you both were able to back up and kind of look at look at the church and what it presents and and what the problems are. And I don't know if this work that the church is doing to try to teach people about you know these essays and that kind of thing, if that's going to help the youth, so that they can always say, well, we've always talked about this stuff. I don't. I don't. Know what their plan is. Yeah. Even the blacks, uh, the thing that. Going yeah, how do you disavow that doctrine? Yeah. A prophet who said that it was yeah. always going to be doctrine. One thing that recently occurred in Idaho was a was a uh, area broadcast. I think for the whole state, is my understanding. Church a, broadcast. A church broadcast. Oh, nice. President uh, Nelson. Nelson spoke at it. We weren't there. I'm getting this secondhand, second but, but I've heard it. And the point was brought out of the translation process, and a picture was shown. Um, of the what we've always known, you know, the, yeah, the fingers over the gold <laughs> plates, right. with a hat in the background. Oh, and and apparently the he read the quote, Martin Harris quote, as to how it happened, you know, that Joseph was would would shield the light with his head in a hat. The words would appear on the rock, the stone, as if on parchment paper. That's the quote. Uh -huh. And then the word would stay there until it was correctly transcribed or, or dictated down, and then it would go to the next word. So, and then the comment apparently was made that, but we don't really know how it happened. So there's so many different messages happening right there that, you know, that it doesn't make 
you know. No, oh, I hadn't nice. heard about this. So yeah, when was this? Just recently? Just recently. Re very recently. Just recently. Well, I had to be because President Nelson, first, first of it all. It was a yeah. state conference broadcast to several states yeah. in our, in yeah. our Aero, state. Regional, regional kind of um, right. all the state of Idaho that, I, that I'm aware of. Interesting. Well, yeah. and you know, the quote that I ended with on our interview was, um, truth has no agenda, right? Yeah. And, uh, and I, I thought so much about that recently. And um, if I may be so bold as to say that there is an agenda within the Mormon Church to hide truth, because that was that way for many, many years. That's why we didn't know those yeah, things. I have to agree. So if truth has no agenda, which I truly believe real, honest to God truth doesn't have an agenda, then there shouldn't be any type of a cover-up. And that you, was your whole point too, in your in your present or part yeah, of your. Now we've got a new problem here, right? Yeah, you know that's that's a that's a problem. You can go back and read Joseph Fielding Smith's saying, Joseph Fielding Smith saying that um, there's been hearsay of this stone being used in the translation process that didn't happen, or he didn't <laughs> think that happened. And then you've got President Nelson recently saying. Quoting Martin Harris, this is how it happened. But if you think about it, if those words are going to appear on a stone and not be changed until they're correctly written down, then why almost 4,000 changes in the Book of Mormon since which the beginning, really which got, was your which issue? Which really got right. me. Yeah. That's right. Oh, that was really big for me, too. Because the Book of Mormon, to me, was the, the first vision and the Book of Mormon was the foundations oh, of my testimony. Absolutely. I honestly read the Book of Mormon very, very consistently. Yeah. All my life, I and loved translated it. Translated word for word. And when I found out, I'm I'm sorry, if if God is Hebrews, what is it? Hebrews, ten something. If God is the same today, yesterday, and forever, yeah. He wouldn't reveal something to a prophet that needed to be changed. And we, we the Mormons have dumped. Bruce R. McConkie, kind of. They've dumped the history of the church. We don't. It's they too don't, controversial. The Journal of Discourses has been kind of dumped. Yeah. Uh, miracle, miracle of Forgiveness has been kind of dumped. Yeah. It is interesting if God's really behind this, and these are apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ, that that, that message would stay the same. Well, guess it would what? Stay the same. We're, We're out almost of time. out of time. Oh. Any last thirty-second thoughts here? I would just say, you, you know, I've said it. You have to just. Get rid of the fear that, for some reason, is in people's so looking, hearts and minds of looking, of looking, of looking. Uh, and really thinking, and and, thinking. and the truth will be opened if you do that. Just ask God, what does He want you to do? That, that's so perfect. Yeah. God, what do you want me to ask do? Ask Him, what, what, you, what, what does do He you want, want me you to, to do? Know? And it is so important. Yeah. I mean, it, Jesus is everything, and what He did for us. And seek to do it together. Seek to come out oh, together. Be kind yeah. and loving. Be to your patient spouse. and loving. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. That was. I'm. I'm glad we did this. Mm -hmm.